This is Julia Witt up with Talk Story TV. I have with me this morning Dr. Andre Berger from Beverly Hills, and he's going to talk to us about anti-aging. Is that correct? Is that correct? In your new book. Absolutely. My new book is the Beverly uh, Hills Anti-Aging Prison. And, and we're uh, all interested in that more. Well, the book is really about what I do every day to make my patients feel better, look younger, and live longer. And I think that's what everybody's looking for. And uh, it really discusses all the things that um, I do for them, what they really understand they need to do to achieve uh, the results that they're looking for in a very effective way. And it does it in a way that I think uh, it's easy to understand, easy to comprehend, not complicated, not too much complicated medical terminology and jargon. Very simply put, uh, plain uh, exact steps are for uh, my face to be successful. You have a pretty comprehensive. Um, I read your book, and you have a pretty comprehensive questionnaire to find out what people's problems are look like. Well, you know, we're very complex beings. We're complex physiologic organisms. We're not that simplistic. Uh, we we get into trouble when we try and compartmentalize things or distill everything down to, you know, very simple terms. Uh, we don't do justice to our true nature, what we are. We're complex, and uh, I ask a lot of questions sometimes, to, you know, the, the appropriate answers. You just mm -hmm. on the surf, not gonna, you're not going to get the answers. Like some, uh, what, some of the pressures we have in modern society, and certainly in the modern Western medical uh, system, is that we have a pressure of time. And it's hard for you, you know, doctors that practice in a more traditional setting to spend the time to go deep, to ask these questions, to really learn and to find out what the basis is for how their patients are feeling and looking, etc. So I've designed things a little differently, and I, I really take whatever time is necessary, asking all the questions I need to ask without the pressure of time to help my patients, and that makes a big yeah, I can see it's very complicated. You're trying to get their uh, questions about their possible hormonal problems and all sorts of things, diet. Right. Well, I understand this, that um, there, there's a foundation, first of all, and, and if, we don't have, if we don't have a foundation uh, for our wellness, for our health, for our looks, et cetera, we're, we're going to build a house of cards going to come down. So the foundation, as I describe in my book, pertains to the idea of a table of support resting on four legs. And those legs are basically your nutrition, number one, and that includes, uh, you know, water, etc. but it's nutrition. Number two, it's the amount of exercise you have, how much you move. Number three, it's sleep. It's the amount of time you're able to sleep, you get restorative sleep quality sleep, and then the last thing, of course, is stress, and the ability to mitigate against stress, because those are the four things that if you don't have, uh, you know, built in a very strong way, you cannot support a healthy platform for wellness, no matter what you do, uh, you're going to have a hard time being successful. In other words, if I start patients on hormones that I've identified as being deficient, if they don't have a good foundation, that's just not going to work as well for them and it's still going to be problematic. So I think the first thing to understand is everyone needs a strong foundation. And with that, you can really build tremendous uh, the, uh, uh, wellness in your life, and you will be able to feel better, you know, look better, and live longer. Uh, and it, obviously, now it gets more complex than that, but that is the basis uh, for everything, and it's spelled out very clearly in the book. After you build a foundation, then you can move to the other levels and build upon that, of which hormone balance is one important aspect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. And re sleep's a lot more important than people ever knew, isn't it? You'll never be well, you'll never feel well unless you're able to sleep. You need, as an adult, you need at least seven to eight hours of restorative sleep every night. And if you're not getting that, you're just not going to be well. And how will you know, how do you know that? If you get up in the morning and you feel refreshed and ready to go, that's a sign that you're getting restorative sleep. If you have good energy level and you maintain that throughout the day, you're not getting tired, 
then you're going to have good, uh, you know, you know, you're having good restorative sleep. But if you if you're having excessive daytime sleepiness, or you're fatigued, or you're tired, or you're moping around, it's very hard for you to get out of bed and get going in the morning. Um, and if your level of energy is, you know, not you know, up there, then obviously one of the most important things you have to think about can influence uh, many other aspects of your wellness. For example, you'll never have a normal weight. It'll be virtually impossible to lose weight if you don't have good restorative sleep. That's one example. Also, people who don't have good sleep will never, they'll never be able to concentrate properly. Their brains will not be working uh, properly. Their memory will never be as well. Their mood will never be as good. So they won't be as competitive in life in general or in the workplace, and they just won't be as pleasant to be around, so they'll be socially less successful. Sleep is just critical for every aspect of our lives, and, you know, we got to respect that, just like we have to respect the nutrition that we put into ourselves, we have to respect the fact that we are designed, human beings are designed to require uh, restorative sleep. Wow. Okay, and the, what were those four foundations again? Well, the first and most important one is nutrition. Uh, you know, remember, 30% uh, or so of what you are, um, you got from your parents. That's genetics, okay? Mm -hmm. but the other 70% will say, and some people will argue it's 20, 80, but I'll say conservatively, the other 70%, that's environment. That's everything you've been doing to yourself since even in the womb. That's the food you've been eating. That's the water you've been consuming, and all the, the, the impurities or toxins and uh, additives and um, chemicals and all that that's been in that. It's also the uh, movement you have or haven't had. In other words, exercise you've been doing. It's the sleep you haven't had. It's the stress you've been, uh, you know, going through. That basically is the environment, and along with the hormone levels you have, the allergies you are experiencing, the toxins in the environment that you're experiencing, the air that you're breathing, the sunlight you're exposed to, the list is extremely long. And that is your environment, and that creates the environment that your genes are subjected to. I call it the soup your genes are swimming in. And we have, we have dirty soup, and the dirtier your soup, the more you're going to negatively express those genes and have problems. So the idea here in life is to clean up that dirty soup. That's what I offer my patients, so that they can positively express that, those genes and thereby have the full opportunity to uh, enjoy the ultimate amount of wellness they can have and live as long as they are programmed to live. That is the essence of anti-aging. Yeah, okay. And you try to find out the um, toxins by the questionnaire, right? Or you don't do like Dr. House and go to people's <laughs> apartment and find out what their toxins are. Well, you know, there's levels. So the first level is before somebody comes, uh, gets treated, if you don't know where you're going, any road will take you there. So the first thing we do is we ask a lot of questions. That's kind of learning the personal side of the story. The next side of the story is, uh, we need to do testing, thorough testing. So we do laboratory testing. We test blood, we test saliva, we test urine, and we do other testing in order to kind of have a complete understanding of what the baseline is, what the story is. Once we know what that is, then we see all of the opportunities uh, that are possible to, quote, clean up the dirty soup, unquote, because we're going to be able to identify those things. And that's when we can start putting a patient on a program because we've identified at the end of that first visit, I will then be able to tell them these are all your issues and this is what we need to do to get you to achieve the goals you set forth for optimal wellness. Uh huh. Okay. So, um, what about stress? I hear stress all the time as the problem. Most that's usually why you can't sleep. Well, it's one of the reasons. Stress certainly is one of the four, uh, you know, pillars of your wellness. And we live in a society where stress is pervasive. Um, the kind of stress we experience today, it's not like we experience when we are, let's say, hunters and gatherers throughout most of our existence. It's not like that. In those days, we had very brief amounts of stress, usually when we're being, you know, we're hunting and some predatory animal 
you know, attacks us and we run away from him and that lasts a few minutes and that's gone and you're back to feeling non-stressed. Today, in our society, it's completely different. Today, everything is stressful. We have traffic, we have noise, we have TV, we have light. Uh, Thomas Edison brought us light 24 hours a day. We have, uh, um, you know, uh, the idea of, you know, uh, uh, news, uh, turn on the news, you've got stress. I mean, the stress is relentless in our society today. People are just impossible to escape from stress. So, therefore, um, that that's not normal for our physiology. Uh, we're not we're not designed for that. Eventually, you get to the point where you can't compensate for that stress. Your body is unable to produce enough of the compensation, and you your behavior has led you into this situation where you're either going to have way too high cortisol or too low cortisol, and you're going to feel the ravages of that, and that is a big problem. So stress really will affect you tremendously, and will cause a number of problems, including, you know, obesity, metabolic problems, heart disease, stroke, um, you know, uh, because it will lead to things like high blood pressure. It will lead to, um, you know, having ab abnormalities in your, in your blood lipids and your blood sugar. Um, due, to, due to high cortisol, and also can lead to low cortisol, which can lead to severe fatigue, being burned out, depression, inability to tolerate infection, being resistant, resistant to it, uh, etc. So again, stress is a huge problem in our society, and again, without dealing with stress, you'll never be well. It's not possible, and everyone needs to understand that. Okay. Well, what else have you? Would you like to tell our uh, audience today? I, I like to tell the audience that if you're really interested in living to your full potential, uh, as long as you are able to live, and uh, then you can do it. But you can't do it by just doing the same things you've been doing. You have to make some changes. And if you read my book you'll be able to really understand very clearly what you need to do to be successful. Some of those things are easy to do, and some may be a little more challenging, but I will certainly get the direction of what it takes uh, for you to do them. Obviously, uh, as I tell my patients, in order for you to be successful, um, there's only one thing you really need to do. And they always ask me, well, what is that, doctor? And I tell them, well, you need to do what I tell you. <laughs> so, I think the most the most uh, most difficult thing is for people to, you know, stay the course, be disciplined, and continue to do the right thing because there's so many negative influences in our society that are a deterrent and a distraction from that. Most of us only do what we know. You, I do what I know. You do what you know. Unfortunately, the problem is that may not always be correct. That information is not always correct. What you hear on the TV, what you what your parents have taught you. Even what you've learned in school, what you learn here on the internet, uh, unfortunately, that information may be actually misleading and can some somewhat dangerous. Um, and I think it's very important that you know you get good information, critical information, and make that information what you know, and then follow those directions rather than you know just anything you hear, uh, which could be problematic. And we're all influenced too much by people who want to take advantage of us because they want to sell us something for gain and not, don't really care about our health and how we feel. So be very cautious and be aware of that as well. And um, could you let us know where we can find your book? My book is available on Amazon, Dr. Amazon and, uh, and it's also available as a enhanced e-book uh, through iTunes. So uh, that's exciting because you can get embedded videos, color graphics, I think that's exciting. On the paper book, what's interesting is that we have embedded QR codes. So if you have a, a smartphone or um, a device where you can scan in the QR codes, then it'll pull up the same videos uh, oh, that are in the enhanced ebook. Okay, and the name of the book again? The name of the book is The Beverly Hills Anti Aging Prescription. It's the same treatment I give to all of my celebrity patients and all of the patients that come here from all over the world who are looking for that anti-aging prescription. 
Well, thank you very much for being with us today, Dr. Berger. Berger. My pleasure. Thanks for having me.